people now, especially the new generation, are shifting from, you know, regular experiences to more of an engaging experiences. And I think that's what we're capitalizing on in, in a digital way. Welcome to episode two, What's Next with Gaurav and Ronit. Hello, Gaurav. Hello, brother. How's it going? Very good. Very good. Greetings from the motherland. Greetings from Dubai. We have a couple of awesome guests today, Gaurav. Um, I don't think you've met them before. Ibrahim and Amer. So I'm going to ask them to introduce themselves to you and to our audience. So Amer, why don't you go first? Give us a few words about who you are and what you do and how do you know this wonderful chap, Ibrahim? Yeah, so uh, thank you, Renit and Garv, for having us today. It's a pleasure to be here and uh, we're very happy to be your guests in the podcast. And um, just a quick introduction about myself and uh, how I met Ibrahim. So uh, my name is Amr. I'm Egyptian, living in Dubai since approximately 14 years now. Been in the commercial business development field since 2009, uh, specifically, you know, into uh, customer management, user acquisition, so on. Uh, would call myself, you know, Ibrahim's best friend. We know each other since 30 years back. He was with me in school. He was with me also, you know, during the university period. And then, of course, when I moved to Dubai, kind of told him, you know, this is the place. I think you need to to come in here. I know we're kind of, uh, we were at uh, this time in a different kind of field a bit. But then he joined, of course, uh, and then we founded this together. I joined Ibrahim just a couple of months after he started this. He quickly, you know... Uh, lured me into this and i was very very convinced from day one so i would say uh we are the the two people who believe in this the most and i think that's the most important part and again we have this kind of a harmony uh, not outside of work and inside of work uh, as as well even more and uh kind of feels you know very content and happy to be doing something like this with a lifetime best friend. So uh, I'll leave it to Ibrahim to introduce himself now. Wow. Wow. I have to say that's that's quite an introduction, not only for yourself, Amar, but also for your friend. And uh, and, uh, Ibrahim, before you introduce yourself, Ronald, doesn't that sound a little bit familiar? I know I haven't known you for 30 years, but this is how we found ourselves (laughs) doing this podcast to begin with. Uh, I'm going to steal that from you, Amar. What an eloquent introduction. (laughs) It's like 30 dog years, right? <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> Ibrahim, please. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Amr. Uh, thank you, Ronit Angaru. The, 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 the story Amr has said most of it, uh, but let me tell you a bit about uh, myself. I, I've been working in ad business and <laughs> marketing since also 2009. Um, I work with a lot of uh, multinational ad agencies, media agencies, and so on. And I also had a couple of roles in uh, marketing uh, communications. Um, as Amr said, we started uh, Fans World together. Um, thankfully, I found somebody uh, who believed in the vision uh, and who also is a is a is a best friend. So it's 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 not easy to find somebody who is that close to you and at the same time believes in, in, in the same, let's say, startup that you're working on. So I really thank God for this. And yeah, we've been working on it for uh, for almost two years now and we're, uh, we're super excited for what's coming next. You both have touched upon, in passing, fans' word. And that's the joint project you're building together Tell us a little bit more about it. I don't know who wants to take it first, either you, Ibrahim, or Amer. For the audience, what is Fans Word and why did you set it up? What was the problem you were trying to solve? So we 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 were looking for a platform where we can give uh, the fans uh, the voice that they've always deserved. Um, the fans all over the world, there are 
uh, one of the most, if not the most important pillar in the sports industry. Uh, but still, they don't have, you know, uh, a lot to do or a way to express themselves. Uh, yes, they attend matches. Yes, they they participate. They buy the team's jersey and and so on. But we wanted a platform where they can really uh, share their opinions, uh, that uh, everybody can can hear them, uh, that they really bring uh, a voice on the table, and that's what why we went with the with the name Fans Word uh, because it's the word of the fans, uh, and I think this is also one of the let's say uh, key differentiations in our platform versus other. Um, let's say sports uh, apps or sports platforms is that we we really focus on the fans and I think we've seen the level of engagement uh, that the fans are putting in in our platform. So uh, just a quick number on let's say the number of of, of interactions or engagements uh, that we had on we had on the platform so far. We're talking around twenty million uh, interactions. So these are either. Um, fans saying what they think of the players, what they think of the goals, uh, which substitutions should happen in the match and so on. So they really uh, feel that they live the game, not just uh, watch, it, watch it. Ronan, yeah, did I he think... say 20 million? <clears throat> yep. 20 million, yes. 20 but million. you know, that's like three Egyptian fans in one match. No? <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot of interactions, guys. 20 million. Yeah. Yeah, it's like 90 minutes of Mo Salah on the pitch, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, but seriously, right, Ronit? I mean, you got to break that down. That's not a figure you can just throw out there, Ibrahim, so lightly in passing. It's not like you're having an espresso and, you know, <laughs> having your newspaper, morning newspaper and going to work. Break that down for us, Ronit? Yeah. I mean, yeah, wow. yeah. Go for it, Ibrahim. Um, yeah, so the, the the interactions that the fans can do on the platform are, uh, let's say, there are five kinds of interactions that they can do. They can uh, predict the scores uh, and the first player who is going to score. They can rate the players. They can rate the goals. They can uh, suggest or guess the substitutions that will happen in the match. And there is also uh, for each and every match, like a mini forum where they talk about uh, the match. Uh, so these are the different kind of, of interactions that they can have. Uh, most of them, uh, not most of them, but a lot of them are coming from predictions because this is what really uh, people are excited about. They really want to share the, the, the knowledge that they have, the guessing who will score first, what's going to be the, the match score and so on. And uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, one last thing also to, to highlight here is that uh, the Saudi League, because of the the, the, the new signings that are happening uh, with the top clubs there, the interactions also uh, increased a lot uh, on the platform uh, from uh, the Saudi users and the non-Saudi users interacting in the Saudi League. So it's not just the Saudi people who are interested in this league. Uh, now everybody in the region is becoming uh, interested there. It's so interesting that you said that. I just have to just... I have to make a confession to start with. I'm not a big fan of any one football club. I know it's haram. I know it's horrible, <laughs> blasphemy, everything over here. Not to not to be a fan of a single football <clears throat> club or anything. But I do love and enjoy very high-level football. But I actually ended up investing in a football platform company uh, six or seven years ago. It's going to go public soon. I, so I don't want to name it uh, here. But... You know, one thing that they found was, is as a streaming platform, they thought people in India would want to watch Indian football and mm -hmm. Indian expatriates who were living in America would want to support their local Indian football teams by watching that match. Mm -hmm. And they found they were completely wrong. They actually mm -hmm. found people from Brazil wanted to watch Indian football and people in India wanted to watch Chinese football. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it was, it was because they wanted to see how those teams worked, what they were doing, what the approaches were. You know how good the talent of scouting was. It was very yeah, interesting. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. Brazilian yeah. football fans wanted to watch Mohan Bagan and you know yeah. in teams. Yeah, yeah really? because they wanted to see the up and coming talent in these countries, and they wanted I've heard to see of Indian what fans. Kind of tactics they were employing. Football, but uh, Indian, yeah. 
You're making this stuff up, aren't you? I'm not actually. So at, <laughs> at one point, this this platform had a higher engagement ratio per person, actually 3x more than Facebook. Wow. Because what they thought was is they thought that people were going to people were going to watch only the highlights. Yeah. And people ended up watching the full game. Right. Wow. So it was unbelievable. And this is all non-series A, uh, Series B, C, yeah. under 21 football. It was unbelievable. So, you know, when you guys are talking about 20 million, are you talking about 20 million just in this region or are you talking about global is where I was trying to understand. Yeah, this. where's your audience, guys? So, yeah. so, yeah, so the most of the users uh, in, in Fans World are uh, from the Middle East region. Um, I would say, yes, since we... We market a lot in the in the Middle East, so there are some users who maybe are Arabs, but they live in France, Spain, Netherlands, Turkey, and Germany as well, and even in Australia and the U.S. But most of them are from Middle Eastern uh, origins, and uh, since we know that most of them are actually from here, so we said we have to make the platform available not only in Arabic but also in English and French because in North Africa there is a huge you know, percentage of people there who actually are French speaking. So that's why we say, you know, uh, it needs to be in the three languages. Now, when it comes to, to the user himself, I have to agree with the, with the Gaurav because quite simply, you don't, you have like one team, like for myself, it's Barcelona, Ibrahim, it's Arsenal. There is one team that Whatever happens and whatever team that they will be with on the final match, like on the Champions League, you will be rooting for your number one team, like for myself, Barcelona and Ibrahim Arsenal. But the idea here is that we like to watch most of the matches where we see that, okay, there is the derby of uh, London, there is the derby of uh, Barcelona, there is the Clásico between Real Madrid and Barcelona. And one of the the you know the the leagues that have the best derbies ever in the world is in Argentina, where you know the derby there is like the grade one security everywhere, and it's one of the most intense matches. So I I agree you most of people are like Gorav that they don't follow a certain team, but they like to watch multiple teams where we know that the intensity will will be high, and that's what we see on the platform. Yes, when the people, uh, the users on fan, on Fans World, when they download the app, they put their their favorite teams and their favorite leagues. But they follow so many other leagues and so many other teams that we see them jumping from a match to another when they see that the notifications are coming in that, okay, maybe Arsenal versus Barcelona is going really well. It's still nil-nil. But on the mm. other side, there is another match that's super intense, so everyone goes there. So it's like a very uh, big virtual stadium where you jump from a match to another and you try to talk to people everywhere. And the thing that we like about the app is that if you go in reality to a stadium and you sit beside a stranger, you know that this guy shares the same passion despite the fact that you don't know him. This is the exact same thing about fans world, but in a virtual format. You log in on, on, on a certain match. You go into the match discussion. You start to discuss with people, people from Saudi, people from India, people from the US, people from Germany. And then we share the same passion because that's why we're all here. And that's why we're discussing this match. So I think that's one of the things that I love about Fans World. And again, Gaurav, you're not the only one, man. You, uh, All of us, we have a, a lot of the favorite uh, teams. And I would say... Most of people now who used to be rooting for Cristiano Ronaldo in Manchester United, they moved to Al Nasser to to support him. Yeah. Most of people who were supporting Benzema in Real Madrid, the Madridistas are now all going to Al Ittihad. Most of people or most of Brazilians who love to watch Neymar and know that it's a matter of years before this, they call him the magician, this magician stops playing he, he has like five six seven more years they want to watch him so they will be watching al-hilal and they will be rooting for al-hilal because at the end they are his fans you've just touched upon there a major major trend that probably three or four years ago none of us would have imagined right <laughs> what is yeah. happening in saudi and football particularly 
Um, you know, when Cristiano went, Cristiano went, we were like, that's strange. What's that about, right? Yeah. Little dream. And it was the start of this amazing trend. I mean, we've seen this in other sports. Um, um, I'm I'm doing this podcast today from India and you know, when you see the creation of the IPL in India and how that transformed cricket, or even earlier when Australia basically shook up cricket uh, in the kind of Kerry Packer days and basically shook up the English establishment. And now we've got the Saudis, Mm -hmm. some really good talent, really good talent. Um, How does this impact, let's be mercenary, how does this impact your business? (laughs) <laughs> You're like one of the leading sports engagement platforms in this part of the world, uh, in the Middle East. I don't know if you're the number one or number two, but you're up there. This must be yeah. must be good good news for you, no? Yeah, absolutely. Because now, even if we are we are still laser focused on the Middle East, I clearly can see that some people in Tunisia or Morocco or even Egypt were not watching the Saudi League before. But now even the Europeans are watching the Saudi League. So definitely it's much better and it and it serves the purpose that not only you'll be following your local uh, league, you will be also following the Saudi League. And uh, we don't want to sound like the experts or something, but we kind of predicted it. We had the Saudi League in our absence a very long time. It's actually, mm-hmm. if you're really into football, it's actually a very, very good league since a very long time ago. And they're always the champions of Asia and so on. So, yes, so Saudi has been trying to invest a lot in sports and in entertainment within uh, the past couple of years. And it's very, very clear. And the way things opened up and the way things have changed. So much money for the audience who are not, say, focused on Saudi. I mean, a lot of our audience are from the Middle East, but there's a good two thirds of our audience listen to our podcast maybe three quarters who are not from the Middle East. Explain to them what is going on in Saudi and Saudi sport and why is the leadership putting so much focus and money on football yeah. and sports? Yeah, so if you look if you look at the numbers, approximately more than one-third of the world was watching the World Cup live. So this means that this is the most popular sport in the world. And in terms of entertainment, people now, especially the new generation, are shifting from, you know, regular experiences to more of an engaging experiences. And I think that's what we're capitalizing on in, in a digital way. But Saudi is trying now to really focus on the sports entertainment because they know how successful it is and how it can build tourism around it. Some people in their itinerary, when they travel and they say, I'm going to Spain, uh, we're going to have two days in Barcelona, Ah, I'm going to go to the Camp Nou. I'm going to go to London and I have to go to the Emirates Stadium and so on. So they are building tourism around it. And then people, they know how much of a popular person Cristiano is, the most followed person in the whole world. If he goes to Saudi, then definitely there are people around Asia, around Europe, around everywhere in the world who will be traveling to Saudi just for him to watch him. And this is, again, to the vision of the 2030 of Saudi, where they have to, you know, you know, take things up into a new level where they never reached before. And of course, tourism is one of them. And again, sports is one of the things that really fuels tourism. For example, myself and Ibrahim, we went to Russia in 2018 in order to watch Egypt uh, match there. It was uh, the first time since 30 years that Egypt qualified to the World Cup. And I can tell you, it this uh, this trip inspired Fans World in a way because we met so many people who spent thousands of dollars just to attend 90 minutes of a match and to experience this. So I think what Saudi is doing now is absolutely uh, the right direction. And I think the, the, the World Cup in Qatar is also another thing to really prove that the Middle East, in terms of infrastructure and in terms of readiness to host huge uh, you know, tournaments and huge players, I think, yes, the past year, they've proved it very, very, very well that they are ready to have that here. Yeah. Gentlemen, 
Now, this is the part of the podcast where we say, show me the money in the most <laughs> lovely, uncrude kind of way. So let me rephrase it for you and yeah. for everyone who's listening, right? You have a passion project. You have investors who believe in a business model because they're going to see returns. On the one side, your platform has very high engagement, right? And that engagement is because you built it for fans. Fans work, right? Gives it away, makes it pretty simple. But for the next layer behind it, how do you make money from something like this? And and you know, how do you how do you make multiple different types of revenue? And obviously, there are going to be pieces of information that you can't share with us because perhaps it's secret sauce. But on the overall part of it, how does it work? So the 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 current let's say revenue model that we have is ads. Um, so the 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 app or the platform is hundred percent free for the for the fans. Uh, they can enjoy it. They can interact. They can engage. They actually also uh, win prizes on on monthly basis. Um, and the way we currently uh, make money is through advertising. So we integrate our app with all the um, what we call the big players like Google and Facebook and so on. Um, uh, and then they drive the relevant advertisers to our platform whenever they have uh, relevant advertisers who are looking to reach out uh, to this kind of audience, uh, the, the let's say the, the youth in, uh, interested in sports and so on and so forth. Um, and I mean, there are a lot of other revenue uh, streams, but for the time being, we're we're uh, we're focused on uh, advertising. Uh, it's it's a very big business. Uh, Amr and myself, both of us worked in in ads and marketing, so we understand the 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 importance, and we also think it's a, it's a very good uh, way to keep the platform uh, free for the users, um, at least even if there is, let's say. Uh, a paid part of the app or something, but at least people who cannot afford or if people who don't want to uh, to pay, then they can enjoy it with with uh, with ads. So, what's next for Fans World? What do you guys got that you can sort of share with our listeners yeah. and users that they it's not there yet, but maybe you can give them a hint of something exciting that they can see in your next product release. Yeah, so. So the next product release uh, was actually a couple of hours ago. Oh, so wow. Had... Okay. So yeah. we're fresh. We're, we're, we're yeah, very yeah. up to date and current. Okay. Give it, yeah. Tell us what it is. So, so the app, uh, up until a couple of hours ago, it was predictions, fan interaction, you know, and live scores. We introduced one of the most engaging games that is actually now booming and it's even more popular than ever and it's football fantasy so we've launched football fantasy in our app as a part of the gaming element for the users we first were a bit hesitant in introducing it but we kind of you know listen to our customers a lot we kind of ask them what they would like to see more in the app and everyone in the world is talking about football fantasy it's multi-billion dollar business everywhere in the world it's in soccer it's in um, football it's in uh, you know uh, uh, cricket it's 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 absolutely huge everywhere in the world so we introduced football fantasy and the concept is you create your dream team with a certain budget and then in the game week whoever does better in terms of what they really did the players in the matches you get more points versus their performance so it's a very skill based game where the people can really showcase their tactical, you know, skills and their managerial skills. So everyone feels like the manager of his own team. And then the more, the better you, you do, the more rewards you get uh, and, you know, and the higher you rank. The other thing also that we're introducing soon is that we have a very specific persona and a very specific age group that is logging in every day on the app. These guys are actually the fuel of the sports industry and they buy millions and millions of dollars worth of sports apparel each year and also tickets to see the match. So we're introducing a marketplace soon where the users will be able to purchase sports apparel and to purchase uh, 
different ticketing and different, you know, renting some football fields and stuff where they can go and play with their friends. So oh, wow. this, yeah, this will be introduced in the app very, very soon. And there will be a specific part of the app where there will be certain rewards for fans word users as a percentage of discount within certain sports apparel. So it's a way of rewarding the users of being fans word users as well. And again, this is another angle of where you you make your money. The other, the the third, and the, you know the most I think most important part is we're tapping in in the Web three angle. And this uh, is something I wanted to ask you, quite quite yeah. honestly, right? The technology platform I talked about was a streaming platform. It was less of a fan engagement platform, more of a broadcasting yeah. platform, democratizing the broadcasting capability for football. In your case, why? Why are you doing it on Web3? Is it just because you are a coder and you feel more comfortable with it? Is there a different piece of it? Uh, is there uh, access to another community that you want to engage with? Why Web3? What, 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 what brought you to that? And you said, I have to build this on a Web3 platform. Yeah, so when we go back to our, to our users and see the way... Uh, you know, their behavior is. Uh, I would say that a user is just like a person like me 20 years ago when my dad used to travel to the US and go back with, you know, these limited deck of cards from the NBA where I was very excited to open the packs and see if Michael Jordan would be one of them or not. Oh, so, yeah. Those are, those are valuable cards, some of them today. Yeah, yeah. Very, very valuable. So, since we are targeting the the next gen or the gen z millennials they are really into the next gen collectibles and this is where the nft part kicks in oh, so this is why yeah so within the target users that we have on our app today there are a big chunk of them who are into sports collectibles and again next gen collectibles means nfts it's it's super interesting. Usually, when people build a sports flat platform, there's three very e easy paths: build a platform, get it out there, gambling, and sports betting. That's usually the formula with any sports platform that there is: build a platform, get the people gambling and betting, like <laughs> betting on team. You guys are not doing that. You guys are saying, build a platform. Let everyone have access, and then let's make it fun for them to do collectibles in a in a Web three platform because that's the new format we expect people to to engage and do tradings as opposed to physical cards. So that's going to be exciting to see. How far away is it for us to see that integration or the collectibles part of the program? Well, th this would need uh, at least, I would say. 12 months from now in order to see the complete integration within that. Of course, the, the more we accelerate it, the better, because we know that our users are looking forward to uh, Web3 integration. Uh, again, the infrastructure of digital collectibles here in the Middle East, I would say UAE is a bit ahead, so this is a place to start, but we see uh, some other countries like Qatar, and Saudi to follow soon. And uh, this is, of course, our target. And again, uh, we still focus on the Middle East. So we have to make sure that whatever we're launching, the infrastructure itself of the country or, or, or of the target countries there is actually ready. So everything goes smooth when we go into launch. I think you guys are very modest and humble. I think in a Web3 space, you have no control, my friend. I think you're going to become much more international than regional, whether you like it or not, yeah, if you have a successful yes. platform built. Uh, people people will decide your roadmap for you. We need this. Give us this. You know, we're having yeah, good experiences. Yeah. So, I mean, from my side, Ronit, I want to hand it back to you and just say congratulations, guys, so far. And uh, yeah, very cool. I'm looking forward to all these product releases. Very, very cool. Congratulations. Ronit, thank, thank you, you so much, Gaurav. Thank you. So just, just to wrap it up, we're sitting here in year 2025. What does success look like and vice versa? 
I, I think that the, the, the both answer that, that question. So we see. Yeah, what yeah I'll leave it. I'll leave it to Ibrahim, and then yeah, I'll leave it to Ibrahim, and then I will also answer. Uh, <laughs> I, I think to me that the, the success is um, is if if we're talking about twenty twenty five is obviously uh, to have fans world as the destination for uh, football fans, uh, not just for um, gaming uh, or let's say for um for uh, news uh, but to be the the platform uh, when it comes to uh, interactions discussion gaming uh, news uh, and to be obviously the the preferred one let's say uh, among the other uh, players in the market amr so uh, we are both co-founders so that's the my exact same uh, so if 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 I don't say the same exact answer, then we Bravo. need to have like an internet. So... Now that's a co-founder. There we go. Well done, guys. That's exactly my answer. Because... <laughs> so, from a personal, not from a business perspective, from a personal perspective, what's motivating you? We sort of touched upon this already. By saying, you know, the visit to the World Cup and going to Russia or Moscow and seeing all the Egyptian fans and each qualifying for the first time in how many years. And what's the, not from a business perspective, but whether it's, I don't know, like what the KPI is in crude terms. How do you measure it? Is it is it money? Is it ha is it just like number of fans you have on the site? Is it a sense yeah. of like when... You guys did a good thing together. For me, honestly, the the the, the fun part, uh, um, apart from the say the the KPIs and the numbers, is that uh, and and thanks God that whenever we start anything, we always see uh, people who are let's say um, interested, engaging, and so on. So this is what I personally see as really fun that you build something. Uh, that you uh, work on it. You uh, first you imagine what you want to do. You you test it. You implement it, and then you see people enjoying it and and having fun. This is really uh, something very nice, especially that uh, you are building this uh, from scratch. So that was uh, definitely uh, something that I enjoyed a lot in the beginning. And we're always trying to make it uh, the way we build stuff. We don't just go and build uh, something that we believe will work. Uh, we always talk to our users to make sure that it's something that they want, something that they they're excited about, like the the fantasy football that we we just launched. So I think this kind of interactions between us and and the users is something that uh, that makes me really uh, enjoying what we do. Yeah, and I think another thing also that uh, we're really, really, really enjoying is that at the end we are, you know. A founder is a frustrated customer or a frustrated user. So for us, what, what we really like to see is that we are fans who one day and still spend sometimes thousands of dollars per year in order to cheer for our team. It's so nice and it's, a, <laughs> it's refreshing to see that there is a platform that everyone can go there it's a one-stop shop platform and you can monetize from it instead of just spending on it all year long. Well, what I really like to, to, to say to these users is I think it's, it's time to monetize from the love of sports. We're not saying don't spend on the jerseys. This is what you love. We're not saying don't go to the stadium. You still keep doing that. But once you go off the stadium, the conversation does not have to stop. Your passion for sports doesn't have to stop. And you can actually monetize and you can actually have fun and still be in a big virtual stadium despite the fact that you still didn't go. Omer, Ibrahim, thank you so much for joining Garov and myself. Uh, we look forward to tracking your progress and the... Okay growth and this amazing moment we're in when it comes to football in the region, Saudi and beyond. So thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you, guys. Thank you so thank much. Thank you for hosting us, guys. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. All the best. Thank you. All the best. Bye-bye.